Joining us now is a jewel of a guy. It is Ken Jewel. Welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you know, I got a chance to read about you, got to learn about you from a fellow colleague. One of the things that I know is that you're known as a thought leader. Have you always been bright? Were you like that A student in school? It's really more about trying to help people and a desire to try and help people to get to where they need to be and where they want to be, uh, as opposed to just letting them get out into the battle and go aimlessly into something that never seems to end. Law books. Yes. It's a lot of reading. When did you realize this is what you wanted to do, that you were a good researcher, that you were skilled at learning things? I fell into it. Okay. Um, I originally wanted to be a psychologist. And then I was a law librarian during the time I was studying psychology in undergrad. Um, and then felt that maybe law was a better path for me. And then, oddly enough, these cases started to come in and they just felt right and it felt comfortable. And I proceeded with it and have been doing it for over 20 years. Congratulations. Thank you. What was that very first case like for you? Do you remember? Everybody <sighs> tends to, when they're in real estate, they tend to remember the first house that they sold. And a lot of times for attorneys, they remember that first divorce. Yeah, it was a little on the crazy side, largely because, you know, you want to think you know what you're doing and it's great that you know the law, but then there's the, the procedural aspects and how to negotiate it and how to get it to the other side. So it was a little scary to say the least. But with each case, even today, with each case, I learned something new because there's always different personalities, different issues that come up and how to manage it and how to get them to where they need to be. And that's how your first passion of psychology kind of Correct. blends in. Yes. When you're talking about high assets, you know, high net worth clients. Yes. How does that differ from like an everyday type of divorce where something could be settled in maybe six to nine months in New York, right? What are you looking at when you're working with them? I'm looking at trying to keep tempers and entitlement down. Ah, tempers and entitlement. When you have the resources to spend and the emotions have gone far beyond what they should, then the problem becomes you know, I want justice. And the divorce world is not about justice. It's about separating two people who are no longer getting along and helping them get along on their way. And so when you have people who have a lot of money or a lot of assets, they don't necessarily think about, gee, you know, I'm spending things that I could use for something else somewhere in the future or pass on to my children. Uh, instead, they're, if they're really upset, they're going to start focusing on uh, their, you know, their, their, their spouse. I'm just going to lay it out there, okay? So sure. trust me for just a second. Of course. A lot of times people will tend when they're blaming, you know, others, they won't point the blame on themselves and take responsibility, but they'll blame the attorney, yes. right? How do you come up with like a fair amount for the time that you have to put in compared to like, when do you ever get tired of the client and be like, could you wrap it up already? Do you know what I'm saying? Like what, there's a fine line, I guess, between there is an expectation in my office okay. that if the case should be done somewhere between six months and 18 months, depending upon how sticky the issues are and how far apart the parties are in terms of getting to a resolution. Okay. And when a client wants to start fighting over the car or they want to start fighting over the dog or they want to start fighting over the house or the bedroom furniture or whatever the case may be, it becomes a question of how much are you paying me and how much are you giving it to the other spouse and whether or not giving it to the other spouse makes it go away. The big problem in emotional divorces is that they carry what is ordinarily a private argument going on in the bedroom, and now they're bringing it into a courtroom and there's a judge and there's <laughs> the two lawyers and you know court reporter and maybe people in the, in the galley and they're all watching this and, and you say, you know, is this really where you want, what you want? Because if you're getting divorced, why are you continuing the fight in a new form? So ultimately, it really becomes a cost-benefit analysis. And every time a client wants something, give them a range in terms of what it will cost to fight it and how much is what, it, what they're fighting over, how much is it worth? Because they could just buy a new yacht. Correct. Right? Or you they could, could have, buy a new car, right, or they, they could, could fund their kids' that's college that's education. Replaceable. They can do many things. They can go to Bermuda for a week. They can do a lot of things with that money as opposed to giving it to the lawyer. And after 18 months, you're probably like, uh, tired of them. You're like, enough already, right? Well, have you ever had to fire a client? Have you ever had to? Yes. Okay, you have, right? Yes, I have. And it's really because the, the what I'm looking for in terms of getting the case resolved 
is not happening and the client is becoming more and more disinterested in terms of resolving the case and they're becoming more focused on fighting and getting even and you can't get even in this case, in this business. The this system is simply not set up for justice. We're sorry that your marriage didn't work out. We're sorry that these things have come up, but if you really want to get divorced and move on, then it behooves you to find a way to find middle ground and settle it. Prenups. Yes. Okay. Do they work here in New York? Yes. Other states as well? Yes. Okay. At what point should someone do a prenup? Every single time they get married? It depends upon the couple. Okay. It depends upon what's at stake. If you have someone who is a fifth generation old money family, obviously, yes, you would want to get the prenup. Uh, but a prenup, oftentimes, in, particularly with people who, let's say, one side has earned a lot of money and they're marrying into somebody who does not have a lot of assets, it can become weaponized and it become a control issue. So New York will routinely enforce a prenup, and the burden is on the person challenging it to try and get it overturned. But what the courts are looking at is, was it fairly negotiated? Was it provided with adequate time? Did the uh, person who's the recipient, did they get to see a lawyer and, and have time to talk about it, time to contemplate its meaning? Um, all of these things are very important. There's no, I say, checklist. Okay. But it's whether or not, in the way the, the prenup is presented, it's fair. And not that it's fair in terms of you're getting what you should be getting, because oftentimes people write bad prenups, but whether or not it's whether you knew what you were going to get um, at the time you signed it. And oftentimes people will challenge it even when the lawyer uh, advises them not to sign the document. And the court's are like, but wait a minute, you were told not to sign this. And why did well, you? Yeah. Right. Well, I didn't think we were going to end up here. Well, it had to be plausible if, you know, you're contemplating this in the document and Aaron in that is that it's a possibility it may not work out. Right. They got that yeah. ball cap and yes. you didn't get the ball cap because Correct. they already asked for the ball cap ahead of time. Right. right? Exactly. So it's going into a marriage with your, right. because it's really contractual. Right? It is a, a marriage contract. is just a contract between two people. Correct. So having that prenup is a, a good way to go. Contract. And actually, a prenup is a great tool to start those difficult conversations that you're going to have as the years wear on. Because as many people who are in long-term marriages understand, it's always a negotiation. And the question is, is whether or not you want to be happy or you want to be right. And a prenup is a great way of being able to start that ability to have those difficult conversations. Because once you have that experience, then it, you may not like it, but at least you know you can get through it or at least have a history to tell you that you'd be able to get through it. And sometimes people in this day and age still stay married and there are happy marriages, yes. right? So we're not just here to say all is lost. There is no hope. Oh, no. But, but there, you're right. There are many happy marriages. There are many happy uh, marriages. Unfortunately, most of them that I see are not, you know, they've come to a conclusion where it's just not working anymore. But I think most marriages work. I think a lot of people want to be married and, and want to have a successful marriage. But it just takes a lot of hard work. Yes. And if not, then you can always have... A do-over, yes. right? And that's what divorce is for. You, <laughs> do si do. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not taken that lightly. No, I understand. I'm just making light of it because yeah. it is a very serious topic, and it yeah. can it can literally ruin families if they don't do it correctly, and especially children. You know, if you have a child, I think it's of the utmost yeah. that you put your child first. The first thing we do is handle the children's issues because, particularly when you're dealing with young children or preteens. Um, they need to know where they're going to be. They want to know where their toys are going to be. They want to know where the Xbox is going to be. And they really don't want the rancor between the parents. I agree. So to, the first thing we try and do is get a parenting schedule together so that the child will know where he or she's going to be or where they're going to be. Uh, and we want them hopefully to have equal parenting time because the children have, and this is the state's view, the children have a right to have a relationship with the parents. They do. Uh, it's not the parent's right to have the relationship with the child. It's the child's right to have a relationship with the parent. And the fact that the two parents couldn't get along doesn't mean that the child now should suffer and not know who mom or dad is. And even when there are things like domestic abuse, I've had cases where it's horrifying, some of the domestic abuse, abuse that's happened. Um, and in one case that I'm thinking of, it was a mental illness that was not properly diagnosed. Yes, ACS got involved. Yes, there was an order of protection issued within a week. 
uh, ACS was trying to get the mother into parenting classes and getting the mother to get the right treatment and try and rebuild the relationship because the damage that would occur to the child by not having that relationship with the mother um, it would be greater than if the child had uh, what do you call it? See, now I'm flopping. Okay. Um, pick up there. Three, two. Uh, greater than if the child had, um, you know, the relationship with the parent. Of course, we want the parent to stop whatever it is that was creating the abuse. So, you know, we don't want to throw the kid into an abusive scenario, uh, but we do want to have, uh, you know, as best as we can to promote the relationship between the child and the parents. So a child comes first. The child always comes first. Yes. It's and the best interest of the child. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I wish I could be just a little birdie, you know, in your room sometime, because I'm sure it's like it, it could make a great screenplay. Thank you once again. Thank you again. for having me. Okay. There you go. Uh, so before you go in, go with your eyes wide open, okay? It's love, but it's also a contract. So thank you for watching. Be well.